Hello and welcome. My name is Steve and you are watching video five in my uh, race day quads Bardwell F7 build. Yes, you heard that right. This is video five. I'm going to go ahead and throw the um, playlist up here so that you can see the content of the previous four videos. Um, it's easier to just kind of show it to you than trying to read it out and takes up less time. Uh, just so that you know, the entire playlist uh, is located in the description below. So if you see anything that looks interesting or you feel like you need to go back, feel free to do so. Uh, also, if you're new to the Radio Master TX16S or any other Open TX radio, I have a 20 plus video series uh, exclusively on I did it on the TX16S, but it applies to any open TX radio. So if you uh, need some catching up there, there's uh, a good resource for you as well. Playlist is in the description below. Let's talk about this video. This is going to be video five. So our F7 quadcopter here is uh, it's built, it's wired, it's bound to the radio. And now essentially what we're looking at is we need to do some configuring in Betaflight. Uh, additionally, we're going to go into BL Heli and we're going to make sure that our firmware for our ESCs is all up to date. We're going to make sure that our motors are spinning the right way. Uh, we're going to do our final checklist and then we should be ready for our maiden flight. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so now that we're ready to configure, I'm going to go ahead. I've got my quad on the table. I've got my props off. Definitely props off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to Betaflight. Like so. Ba boom. All right, so Betaflight has immediately recognized my quad. And generally, what I do right here is I go ahead and I hit this calibrate accelerometer button and wait for it to calculate, and then I uh, reset the Z axis. And then hopefully, your quad will behave as follows. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick up my quad and I'm going to pitch it up. And essentially you want that image uh, to be doing exactly what your quad is doing in real life. Pitch down, um, how about roll to the left, roll to the right, how about yaw to the left, yaw to the right, okay? So if your quad is cattywampus in any way, shape, or form, you're going to want to go to the configuration screen and click on it and you're going to need to be making some changes here now for those of you who watched video two you know that this frame on this quad is stupid weird in that essentially when we built the quad we built it upside down right now with the quad upside down the flight board and the four and one ESC are actually right side up the way they would normally be on a quad. I said in video two that I was going to fix this and I did fix this because, uh, essentially what I did was I previously installed the motors to where they were pointing up right here. And what my problem was is that my antenna for the video, as you can see is poking out right here and with the motor facing up, the propeller was dangerously close to hitting it. So I decided to figure out how to set it up correctly in beta flight. And that is why you see that my roll degrees are set to 180 degrees. Your roll degrees are not going to be set to 180 degrees. Most likely, unless you use the same stupid frame that I did, your roll degrees are going to be set to zero. Now, there was also something else that I needed to do to make this happen with the motors, but I'm not going to go into all that right now because I think for the probably 99% of you out there, uh, your roll degrees is going to be set to zero. And then the rest of this is going to be the same as what it is right now. And when and then when you perform this task with your quad, it's it should be right. OK, mine is just cattywampus because I had to flip the whole thing upside down. Now, if you have the same exact frame and you're interested in how to fix the motors, we're going to get back to that. So if you've got the same stupid frame that I do, then we're going to get back to that. But for the rest of you, uh, let's just keep moving on. All right. So back to setup. That's really what we're interested in in this page right here is that that our quad is doing on the screen exactly what it's doing in real life. So let's move on to ports. 
All right, so going back to the video on wiring, if we remember what we wired what to, if that made any sense, uh, then this screen won't be any issue. So let's go ahead and fill this sheet out as it pertains to how we wired up the flight controller. Now UART1 uh, is, in our case, uh, just as a reminder, I am using an FR Sky RXSR D16 Pro to call receiver. It's got S bus and it's got telemetry. Okay, so first thing that we want to do is I'm going to go to UART1 and here's my S bus, my serial, and I'm going to go ahead and check it. Now for my UART2, okay, now for my UART2, that's where I put my smart port. So I'm going to go ahead and select smart port there. And for those of you that remember, we used our smart audio out of our VTX on UART5. So I'm going to go ahead and select that right like that and hit save and reboot. So this is the way yours should look if you're using an FR Sky RXSR and you're using a video transmitter with smart audio. All right, if I just completely lost you and you're freaking out, don't freak out. Because Bardwell has done an exceptional job with the documentation. If you go to the documentation, remember we're using, in, in my particular case, an FR Sky RXSR. I mean, here's all the wiring right here, clear as day. And then right next to the wiring, he's got this port setup thing for you already. All right, UART1 is checked in the second area. UART2 is smart port. I mean, check it out. There it is right there. All right, very, very easy. You can see exactly how I got the, the stuff that I got. And then I didn't really do anything else until UART5 with my VTX. So let's go down. And obviously, you're going to set this up based on what uh, receiver you have. And here we come down to the, the VTX and check it out. Boom, VTX, UART5, and I set it to Smart Audio. Most important thing to do, save and reboot. Reconnect. All right, next tab. Incidentally, before I forget, I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to enable expert mode so that I don't forget any of these tabs. So, configuration, very, 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 very important. Very, very, very important screen. Another thing that a lot of beginners can take comfort in is that uh, this flight controller is pre-configured in Betaflight. So a lot of this stuff, the vast majority of it, is already done for us. Like for example, if you get the recommended 4-in-1 uh, ESC, uh, this is already set up correctly for you. Uh, we are running a Quad X. That should be part of the default. I think that's part of the default. All right, so for receiver, you want to make sure that you're set to serial based and S bus. And of course, this is assuming again that you're using the FR Sky, uh, same receiver that I'm using uh, in the video. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to, you know, look yours up. Other features, I pretty much went with the defaults. Uh, I want telemetry, air mode, OSD, and dynamic filter. All right, so for D shot beacon configuration, I don't remember what the defaults are. I know that I'm pretty sure I set this one, RX set. I'm pretty sure I set that one on uh, and the reason for that is because I'm going to set up an auxiliary channel uh, for a beeper it makes the ESCs beep uh, that way if you lose your quad in the field or something like that uh, you can flip a switch and it'll make the ESCs beep it makes it a little bit easier to find it in tall brush or stuff like that uh, beeper configuration I turn I think all of these are set to on I turn most of them off except for the ones that I'm interested in this is all a matter of opinion um, it's entirely up to you what you decide to choose here. DSHOT 600 was pre-selected. Uh, we'll come back to ESCs in a second. We talked about the sensor alignment. And moving right along, moving right along, don't forget to save and reboot. If you make any changes, you got to save and reboot. All right, so power and battery. I'm not exactly 100% sure where I arrived at these numbers. Uh, I charge my batteries, my four cell batteries, uh, up to 16.8. So if we do 16.8 divided by four cells, that's 4.2. I think I generally want to know 
when my batteries get below 15. So I think that might be where this number came from. There's 15. And I'm pretty sure that uh, 3.5 uh, times four is going to be a 14 and there it is um, I'm very conservative with my batteries I'll I'll run a battery for five minutes and I usually don't ever let it run down to 14 uh, generally when it gets just south of 15 on a 4s battery um, I'll come back and land but that's just kind of my own thing I like to try to get my batteries to last as long as possible if it's important to know that uh, as a beginner that if you drain your battery way down like literally i mean if you're starting at 16.8 volts and you drain it down to like 12 or less and i'm not exactly sure what the what the number is uh but if you if you fly your quad until it absolutely won't fly anymore again you could damage that battery to where it will not come back to life uh, or even worse uh it could you know worst case scenario it could catch on fire so be very very careful um if you're new, then you need to stop everything and go do some research on LiPo batteries. Uh, they're ticking time bombs if you don't treat them correctly. And if you think that's a stretch and a scare tactic, well, um, just just do a YouTube search for LiPo fires. All right, so moving on. Failsafe. So failsafe comes in two stages, a stage one and a stage two. Uh, I generally keep all of the defaults over here for stage one. And then for stage two, I just drop it. I don't try to land it. Basically, if the if the quad goes into failsafe, I I select drop instead of land. If if the quad goes into failsafe, I want all the power to be cut. I don't want the prop spinning. I don't want it to try to land because what if it tries to land like in a place you don't want it to land? Uh, so that's that. All right, so we're going to take a real quick look at PID tuning. Uh, if you're brand new to the hobby and uh, you've never even flown before, just leave these all at the defaults. Period. End of story. Moving on. Receiver. Okay, so in order to check our receiver, we are actually going to need to give some power to our quad and turn our receiver on. All right, now that we've got power to our quad uh, and our radio is on, uh, what we're going to do is... All right, so if you've been following along in the video series, make sure that your channel map is set to AETR. That is the way we set it up earlier in this series. All right, so let's take a look and make sure that everything is working the way it should. Uh, let's go ahead and push our throttle up. That is our throttle. You can see that as we push our throttle up, our throttle is, uh, you can see that as we push our throttle up, our throttle indicator is indicating. Uh, here's our yaw, yaw to the right yaw to the left this is pitch forward pitch back pitch forward pitch back and then here's roll to the left of me and roll to the right of me so all those things are working just fine all right so that is our four basic channels we're going to be adding three more channels we're going to add a channel for arm a channel for flight mode and a channel for uh uh, a switch for our buzzer so that our, we can make our ESCs beep if we lose our quad on the tall grass. And we're going to do that on the mode screen. Adjustment screen is relatively advanced stuff. We won't be getting to that anytime soon. But if you check my uh, OpenTX series, uh, I do have an example where I use adjustments for the purposes of tuning your PIDs in flight. This is not a thing. This is a thing. We're going to come back to this. OSD, here's where uh, you can select what you see through your goggles. And this is really just a matter of personal preference, but you can make check the boxes over here. And then if you feel like you want to move things around, you can actually move them around nice and easy. And then basically, don't forget to hit save. All right, so as far as video transmitter is concerned, if you're using smart audio, uh, this is where smart audio comes in. Uh, it makes pairing up your goggles with your video transmitter so much easier because you can just do it right here in Betaflight. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure whether all of this was here or not with the default settings, uh, but I am going to do another video later in the series uh, where I actually follow all of these directions and take you through the steps to get this whole thing set up. Don't have anything there. Don't have anything there. And this is also another, 
I don't think I've made any changes here. All pretty advanced stuff. I mean, we're really in the basic stuff, so we're not going to really mess with any of that stuff right now. All right, so even though we're having a ton of fun, and I know you'll be sorely disappointed, uh, we're probably somewhere around the 15-minute mark, which means it's time to wrap things up for this video. I did not get to the BL Heli stuff. I think this is a good place to cut and do BL Heli in the next video. Then we're going to do our, um, our final walkthrough back in beta flight. And then we'll be ready to go out and take our maiden flight. So let's go ahead and cut it here while we can. I'm Steve. I hope you were able to get some benefit out of that video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications of future videos as they come out. Because there's just so much more coming. So, so, so much more coming. And I will see you then.